I'm Kathy Novicki, founder of Champions Over Cancer, and I'm coming to you tonight, May 31st, 2017. Whatever happened to Y2K? 17 years. Boop! So, today's six, day six, out of my 90-day challenge, and I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about some of the things that happen when you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Things like money. I couldn't work during my treatment. I was out of work for 11 months and had no income. The other thing that people don't talk about, but affects you greatly is sex. They cut off my boobs. Do you think I wanted to have sex? Well, my 21 year old son is sitting over there on the couch, so I think we're going to leave this subject for another live. But children are involved money are involved. What are the two things that married couples argue about most? Money and children, raising their children. And when you don't have an income coming in for almost up to a year, things happen. I lost my job as an ICU registered nurse. We eventually lost our home. We had to short sell it. We had to get a rental, which we found difficult because we had two dogs, one dog, one dog at the time, and my children wouldn't have lived anywhere without that dog. And so when your medical bills are piling up because you're going through acute cancer treatment and you don't have an income coming in, your stress exponentially goes through the roof. And then I can remember lying in bed one night. It was my treatments ended the end of December in 2010 and I did not fight and get my job back until third week of March of 2011 and I can remember lying in bed at night hearing sleet hitting the roof you know some kind of precipitation coming down thinking Will we have a roof over our head tomorrow night? It's a terrible thing to have to think about. Uprooting your children. Our children were 14 and almost 14 and 18 when I was diagnosed. Not only did it cut into their childhood, but they had to be uprooted, they had to move, my daughter was in college. She wanted to come home when I called her. And my son had to, you know, go on another bus, another change. And it's, you know, you feel bad enough physically, but emotionally, there's so much going on. And then you add all of this stuff on top of it. The the percentage of divorces after women are diagnosed with breast cancer is, I believe, 50%. So, and add that to the equation. It, you don't have to be really good at math to understand that cancer plus no income plus stress and more stress equals 
an unbelievable amount of financial burden. There, and don't get me wrong, there are, there are many, many um, charitable societies, um, businesses that, that um, you know, um, give out, um, I don't know what they, they call them, a, um, you know, a gift or something like that. You know, we had oil, um, someone um, donated the town, we, we were able to get a, a, a tank full of oil, but in our rental, the windows were so old that when you heard a car go by and there was rain, if there was, the roads were wet, I would think the window was open because that's just how they were. And so a lot of that heating oil went out the window. Now I'm not saying that I wasn't thrilled to have a place to live. I was. And we got it because of people we knew and I'm forever grateful for the for the connection and the their faith in us and we lived there for three years I think and it was very it was it was very nice but it was just this all this uprooting that you know when this stuff is going on personally in your life and then your whole family has to get uprooted, you know, is uprooted. And then if you become a sing, you know, you become a single mom with children. Now, granted, my children were, thir you know, 14 and up. So they weren't little children. Women are getting breast cancer with little children and there are women that are getting breast cancer that haven't had children before. So they have a slew of other issues to deal with. Do I, you know, do I want children after this? Am I going to have a marriage after this? I mean, thank goodness I didn't have that question to deal with. That was about the only question that I didn't have to ask myself. But this is one of the things that the medical community does not address. They just want the money for their treatments because they're a business. And you can negotiate with them. And from what I've read, you should start a very, very detailed journal of your bills, what you pay, who it goes to, the date you sent it, anybody you talk to on the phone, in an office, in a hospital, because they add up. One, I can always remember telling my husband when we were looking every year, you know, you have to look at your, at your insurance, you know, they, when they change it. And I would look at all the different things that we use, the physicians that we use, the services that we use to see if it was covered. And the one thing I always told him was, if you have to do this, because he always made me do it, if you ever have to do this, never, never, never take a plan with a million dollar lifetime limit because I'll please trust me when I tell you this you can blow through that and it's not that hard and you will be then you'll be in more trouble because now you've limited you've you know you've hit your limit and I don't know if that carries over if you stay with the same company that I, I am not an expert in, and I don't know that answer. But part of all of this, and what cancer's, cancer champions over cancer, sorry, um, what we're trying to educate and inform people is that they have to advocate for themselves, 
and if they don't know the answers, to come because we can connect you to people that have the answers. I was taught in training, becoming a nurse, that the most dangerous person is the person who thinks they know what they're doing and doesn't ask questions. That applies to when you're a patient too. Because if you just sit there and nod your head like this when they're telling you what they're going to do, that's not, you know, you need choices. You need, you need to hear, and you need another set of ears to hear with you. Because when you're diagnosed with this type of illness, 80% of what you hear goes whew, right over your head. Because you're like, wait a minute, the world stopped, just the earth stopped turning. And what, what's going to happen to me? So start early. Have someone that will go to you with your appointments, listen for you, take notes for you, bring questions, and negotiate. Negotiate because they will, you know, um, networks and physicians will negotiate with you, but only if you ask. So, to wrap up, Money, children, breast cancer, marriage, what happens? You're fighting for your life, but you also might be fighting for your marriage and to keep your family together. It's not easy. And if you need to fight for your finances and to your bills, you have to fight for your marriage. And if, if it's important to you, as it was to me, you find a way to get through it. Whether it's just be, this um, communication between the two of you, or if you need outside help, get it. Find it. If you don't know where to get it, email us. Check out our website. Check out our, our Facebook page. We want to help. We want to make connections for people so that they can close that chapter of their life as a breast cancer patient. Being done with acute therapy, they can put survivorship, they can close the door on survivorship and open the door to being a champion and start that new life because you'll deserve it. You deserve it. And nobody can tell you any different. You know how you feel inside. Stand up for yourself and go out there and grab this opportunity for a second chance at life because there is life after cancer. Even if you have a mountain of bills and even if your marriage doesn't survive, you will because you're a fighter, you're a warrior, and you continually strive for quality of life. So please, follow us on Facebook, look at our website, talk to your friends. We're changing the conversation on life after cancer. We're talking about the culture of cancer being cancer-free. And come along with us. Help us. There's 13 million cancer survivors in the United States. There's 30 million in the world. That number is not going to diminish. It's only going to continue to go up. This is a population under the cancer umbrella that is not being sufficiently followed and addressed with help. So, we're going to try. We're going to do it. Not try. We're going to do it. Whatever, whatever it takes. Because you've got the second chance at life. Step through that door and grab it. And let us help. Okay? So this is day six out of 90. Tomorrow is 
Thursday, <laughs> June 1st. Because I don't work the same days every week, sometimes I don't know what day it is. Day of the week, date. So just ignore those little hiccups. And I will talk to you tomorrow. I have I have a big announcement to make tomorrow. And so you're going to want to tune in to see what I have to say. And I guess that's it for now. So, Kathy Novicki, signing off on number six Facebook Live. I want everybody to have a good night. Be safe. Peace.